All right, I'm actually here with Chase, what I call the snake master. <laughs> Wouldn't you call yourself a snake master, sort of? Yeah. <laughs> Chase is real big into reptiles. He came out of his house day before yesterday, a couple of days yeah. ago. Yeah, two days ago. He sees a snake. Really not sure what it is. He has a pretty good idea, but he's not sure. So he posts the picture on Facebook. As soon as I saw the picture, I knew immediately what Chase had found was something pretty rare. And what Chase had found was a what? An albino cottonmouth. An albino cottonmouth. So that is extremely rare. So the first thing I do is I get on Facebook and I say, hey, call me. So what did you do with the albino? Oh, we gave it to the zoo. And um, the zoo took it and they're take, going to take care of it. It had some lumps on its body or something. Yeah. It was kind of sick. It yeah, was it was just sick. sick. Now, it's extremely rare for an albino water moccasin, for an albino anything, especially for a water moccasin, because they have babies literally once every two or three years. So this is this is the mating time of the year, so it kind of explains, because they got home late that night and found another water moccasin. Yeah, in our garage. Right on the garage. Chase, how do you feel about that snake? Think you'll get to see it again, that albino? Maybe. It might come in my garage <laughs> again. <laughs> Well, it's definitely, this is the prime habitat, and again, I spoke earlier about it being right in the middle of uh, houses and condos yeah. and all kind of cool stuff. And they've actually just kind of built this place right in the middle of perfect snake habitat. And this is definitely falls into that category. you got alligators out here. Yeah, you got alligators, turtles, turtles, rattlesnakes. rattlesnakes yeah, they've everything. seen some really cool stuff, stuff that I've never seen. Yeah. Seen rattlesnakes, but never in a, you know, tangled position. Yeah. So... Again, here's Chase. Chase, thank you so much, buddy, for letting us come thank out you, and Rodney. stomp around your neck of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> now, where did That's you fine. release the one you saw? All the way, way off to you. right through there. We're in like what we would call a little bay head. This is a palmetto bay head. And what we're doing is we're looking for water moccasins. There's a pond just to the, it's actually brackish water just behind us, which would be our, our west. The east is all houses. And what's happened is they built this neighborhood literally right in the most wild set of woods you could ever pick. I mean, it's, it's, it's certainly the original Florida. When you see what we're seeing now, this is original Florida. If we can catch a few snakes, relocate them to somewhere safe, awesome, then they won't get killed. Water moccasins are rare in itself. In some areas, they're very congregated, and in others where you think you would find them, you, have, you just don't see them. So they're very sporadic. So hopefully, this is one of those areas where they are a lot of. So I'm gonna actually in your mind you think man this is prime snake territory and in a snake's mind they're like they need sunlight reptiles body temperature basically here's our we're just kind of moving stuff out of the way nice and slow can a snake strike that distance you betcha so you got to be real careful move real slow and be very observant so hopefully we're observant enough tight spots like this when you have that rotting vegetation remember that a two degrees means all the difference in the world to a snake a fish anything that's cold-blooded that actually has to regulate their temperature according to their surroundings a reptile is no different so when we have these tight spots like this what we do is we look for rotting vegetation because it's going to be a little bit warmer than its surrounding area and they see that they feel it and they know right away
found what we came for. And what it appears is these guys are right in this grass. And it's, it's more important to iterate that he's literally 14 inches inside of this grass. He's in the ready position. His fangs are sticking out, so he's ready to strike anything that walks by. And I mean, this is the stereotypical water moccasin. This is a fat guy. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get him out of there without getting bit and kind of relocate him. We are in what I would consider probably one of the most residential areas that I've ever seen a water moccasin. Um, so yeah, we let's see how we do. But, um, okay, he's gonna try to move. Oh, he's just ready, ready. Yeah. All right, so, so what we need, what we need now is uh, y'all stay right there. Oh yeah, he's he is a chunky monkey. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he made that dash on in, so. I'm going to come around the other side. Hey guys, I'm Rodney Rogers. Obviously I'm with Russ Rollins, the leader of the monsters. He's letting us come out to pile up some, try to pile up some snakes. We did find one snake and I was trying to get some cool footage of it. And as I kind of moved the grass back, he kind of took off on us. You were skunked basically. I was, I was skunked. You have been skunked by the snake. <laughs> <laughs> I have been schooled by the snake. They actually found the albino snake that we all posted on, that Russ has on his website, and of course we got it on ours too. So that's what, we, we weren't hoping to find the alb albino, we were... Well, maybe the albino's mama. The albino's mama. Or now, when I caught that snake originally, I used right. my hands to grab that snake. <laughs> <laughs> Fact of the matter, I wasn't even in town when it happened. And if I'd have seen it, I probably would have chopped his head off with a shovel, which I know is not the right thing to do. Right. But that's probably what I would have done because I'm scared of snakes. Bad. 90% of the people out there would have done that yeah. same thing, you know. But it was an albino water moccasin. Now, we did find a big one over here, and it was a fat one. It was about almost five feet long. And when I tried to hold it down the second time I saw it, it just kind of it pulled out. I mean, it was How big was it? Strong, almost five feet. Oof. Yeah, he was a big, I mean, he was just a big, fat snake. Well, I'm going to take you to an area next where uh, we, the first time we came here, is a pathway. Right. And on this long pathway, there's brush on each side, and we were turning a corner, and we saw two rattlesnakes intertwined, and they were either, you know, I believe right. they were making love. That's what they were <laughs> yeah, doing. But, or they sure were fighting, which could, sometimes can be the same thing. Yeah, I'm but sure. uh, but they were they were huge rattlesnakes. Right. So there's an area over here where I know there's a lot of snakes. Now are you a big snake guy? You like snakes? Or? Hate snakes with a passion. I, I cannot stand them, and my boy loves them. He's got a bunch of snakes, and I don't even like to go into his room. When, I, I hate them. <laughs> now all the years I've been around the snakes, have I ever seen a snake? You know, do the end twenty? No, never seen you it. Haven't? And I have looked for them. Yeah, you know, it's just one of those things that just kind of happened by. You know. So I've seen uh, snakes intertwining, and I've seen an albino snake, and and I don't even I'm not even in the snake business. You've probably seen eight snakes all together, and fifty percent <laughs> of them have been rare. Unusual, yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> for me, I've seen a million, and nothing like that. <laughs> Russ, I appreciate it. Of course, brother. man, no problem. He's a man.